Another Bleacher Report article. One reason not to overlook every NBA team for the 2024-2025 season, and it starts with these two teams, ironically enough. I'm overlooking them. Where are they? Oh, they're way down there. I'm not looking at them. I'm looking over them. Atlanta Hawks lineup versatility. Pinpointing an exact direction for the Atlanta Hawks remains somewhat difficult. Yep, that's about right. They do they do have some versatility, you know. Jalen Johnson, Risa Shea, Dyson Daniels even. I'm I'm happy to I'm I'm going to enjoy watching Trey go out there and just ball without having to worry about DeJounte Murray being there, anchoring him fucking down to the ground. And that's right. Boston Celtics, they are the rightful favorites to win it all again. Brooklyn Nets, tanking promises plenty of experimentation. That is true, man. Interested to see how many point, how many shots Cam Thomas puts up there. Going to have some young guys out there, but, you know, I don't know how exciting some of these young guys are. They can have, like, I forgot that they traded for Zyra Williams, but Noah Clowney. Um, what's going on with Dariq Whitehead? Charlotte Hornets, they've quietly assembled a real rotation. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The people, I, I've noticed this on Twitter. People are starting to catch on just a tiny bit. People are starting to catch on just a tiny bit. Now, you guys know that I've been very pro Charlotte Hornets over the years, and I've every single year I picked them to be better then Vegas thinks every year I say, this is a sneaky play-in team. This is a sneaky playoff team. I think last year I had them close to being top six in the Eastern Conference. So that was a fuck up on my part. Are the Hornets going to be good every year, every year? But you know what? They have quietly built, just like Bleach Report says, they've quietly assembled a real rotation. If LaMelo's healthy, year two of Brandon Miller. Don't forget about Mark Williams. Miles Bridges back in the fold. Pretty big contract. Don't sleep is all I'm saying. Josh Green is a starter. Well, we saw what Josh Green did in the Olympics, or rather what he didn't do, which is anything basketball related. Chicago Bulls, what if Lonzo Ball is actually healthy? Well, if that's the, ugh, God, if that is the one reason to not overlook the Chicago Bulls, and that's, that's sad. And I, I feel sad for my Chicago Bulls fans, brethren out there. Feel bad for you guys. If that's the one thing that we have to look forward to. Cleveland Cavaliers, the big four is not even close to peaked. Um... I wonder what they mean by this because they were flirting with some really, really high highs in regular season moments and are just disappointed in the playoffs. And maybe you can make the argument that that's who they are in the playoffs. And there's definitely an argument that they can't really coexist. These four, you definitely should still try it out. They're all young enough that you owe it to yourself to really kind of ride this thing out. But this will be a pretty big make or break year, I think. If, if if they sort of sputter out in the playoffs again, somebody's got to go. All four of them are locked up under contract. So it had to be trades, but... Need a bounce back year from DG to PG. He was disappointing last year. One of the most disappointing players in the entire sport. And are, we're waiting for this Mobley breakout. Dallas Mavericks, they improved the offense without compromising the defense. Oh, well, okay. All right. Hey, 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 hey. You said it. I'm not entirely convinced just yet, but okay. And if that's true, they improved the offense without compromising the defense. We're talking about a team that just made the NBA Finals. Got better offensively while still staying as good defensively. Keep in mind what you're saying over the back, you know, final quarter of the season, they were the best defense in the entire sport. Now, I don't know if that's really who they are to be honest with you. But if they're top 10 in both offense and defense, that's definitely possible. That's definitely realistic. That's an NBA championship caliber team right there, ladies and gentlemen. 
That is a NBA championship caliber team. Najee Marshall signing will go down as the best for the team this offseason. I could definitely see Najee Marshall being a... Oh, I just now realized I had top chat open, so I haven't even been reading all the chats. Uh, it's definitely a contender for being the best signing of the offseason. Najee Marshall. All right, interesting. I mean, that's that's high praise right there. Denver Nuggets, the starting five will remain absolute fire. So any starting five with Jokic is going to perform. We know that. But it might take a hit. At the, it might take a little bit of a hit this year. It's consistently been the best starting five in basketball, numbers wise, when they're out there. But they lost KCP and Jamal Murray looks a step slow right now. So we'll see. We shall see. Depth is a, is a problem for them. But, you know, at the same time, if a couple of their young guys hit and really take strides, then they'll be really fucking good. I'm, I'm just, I'm a little scared of them. In a bad way. For the Nuggets. Like, I'm scared for them, I guess I should say. Detroit Pistons. Actual floor spacing has arrived. This is true. This is true. And tra trash can me. Thinking about this a couple days ago, I saw some clips about Cade Cunningham on the timeline and the timeline. There's some, deep in my stomach, there's some potential play in buzz here. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to pick it, but there's something in my brain that's telling me, could this be a sneaky 10 seed? Could this be a sneaky 10 seed? Hmm. Think about it. Think about it. Cade Cunningham's really that guy. Simon Fontecchio is a baller. Yeah, Fontecchio is good. He can shoot. They brought in Malik Beasley. They brought in Tim Hardaway Jr., Tobias Harris. So the shooting should be better, and that's been a big problem for them. Golden State Warriors, their rotation should be deeper. I mean, their rotation's deeper. It, it like went from a puddle to maybe a slightly larger puddle, but it's a puddle of shit. Like, it's, it's not what you want. Just really not that in on them. Houston Rockets. Basically, everyone on the roster, on this roster, will get better. It's an interesting way to look at it. Ton of young talent. We know that. Shangoon flirted with All Star, an All Star game nod last year. I mean Thompson, one of the better rookie defenders we've seen in quite some time. Non big rookie defenders. Jabari Smith definitely showed us some flashes. And Whitmore showed us some flashes. Jalen Green showed us some flashes. I'm not entirely sure that this is something you can 100% bank on. But yeah, they still have like a weird, who's the guy there? Do they have a the guy? And if you want to start winning, winning, you need the guy. The idea of having a bunch of young guys who could be the guy is fun. But then when you actually need the guy, it's not so fun anymore. Indiana Pacers, continuity can spur progress. I actually like the Pacers quite a bit in coming into this season. Halliburton, Siakam for a full season. Miles Turner. Let's not forget, Ben Math's coming back. Nimhard, we're all kind of expecting a breakout. I don't know what's going on in the chat. Los Angeles Clippers, this team should caps lock defend. Los Angeles Clippers, are you in need of a nap? Put them on. They're going to be boring, folks. They're going to be boring. Uh, they should be pretty good defensively, though. Derek Jones Jr., they brought in Chris Dunn. Kawhi, if he's out there. Terrence Mann, good defender. Los Angeles Lakers, the top of the roster is close. I mean, the, we saw in the Olympics, like LeBron still looks like a top seven player in the sport. We know AD's in the top 10 or right around it. Yeah, look what the Mavs did for Derrick Jones Jr.'s reputation, man. Oh, yeah, Nick Batum on the Clippers again. That's right. The tough silver lining for the Lakers. Yeah, but... 
Kumar, I'm timing you out for just a time. I'm just putting you in timeout for a little bit. You're, you know, just in the middle. Memphis Grizzlies availability only goes up from here. Knock on glass. Knock on glass. John Morant played nine games. He could play zero. The Grizzlies will be fun to watch. Miami Heat contract year Jimmy, you say. I'll believe Jimmy Butler really putting forth effort in the regular season at a consistent level when I see it, okay? Let's, let's be honest. If Jimmy Butler does the normal Jimmy Butler regular season shtick, he's still getting a massive bag in the offseason, okay? Milwaukee Bucks, last year's decline was overblown. I actually do agree with this. I think the Bucks are actually heavily slept on currently. Um, they're over under, I think it's 50, which they won 49 games last year, despite how disappointing they felt. Uh, I, I feel like they're going to crush that. Like, I feel like they're going to crush 50. I feel like they'll crush it. Gary Trent Jr. on a minimum is great. I like DeLon Wright quite a bit for them. Dame will regress even further. It's possible, but it's also possible they grow a little bit more comfortable with each other. Minnesota Timberwolves, they may have addressed their biggest issue. I just, you know what you're really talking about when you're talking about Dillingham stepping in immediately and addressing their biggest issue, which I'm guessing is going to be on-ball creation. Spacing on-ball creation and shot-making deficits each plagued Minnesota last season to varying extremes. That's a lot on the plate of a rookie who's 160 pounds. I like him. He's fun to watch. This feels more like a hopefully in two to three years, Dillingham is like, can be our starting point guard when Mike Conley's retired. I think there's some some space for some regression for the Timberwolves, the more I think about it. Unless Ant takes a massive step forward, which is possible. New Orleans Pelicans, a more dynamic offense. So this is true. They desperately need a center. He desperately needs a center. They, they desperately need a center. Until then, they're just a, a TBD. New York Knicks, lineup flexibility galore. Yeah, they should be able to throw quite a bit out there. But the moment Mitchell Robinson goes down with an injury, I guess that will make them even more flexible because they're just going to be throwing shit out of wall. You're not a Misi believer? No, I'm very much not a believer in centers coming in immediately and impacting, unless it's my team. Oklahoma City Thunder, this might be the most complete team in the league. What's Giddy doing there? Yeah, they might be. They might be the most complete team in the league. I saw somebody bring this up. And it made you think. Jake Gildas Alexander, second in MVP voting. Everyone, including myself, think J Dub's hovering around top 20 in the league. Lou Dort, Alex Caruso, Case and Wallace, all incredible defenders. Chet Holmgren. People refer to him as the, you know, if it weren't for Wimby, he would be the talk of the town in terms of young bigs in the league. What's what? There, be, there, there better be a ring in the coming years. Like, it, it, I think almost anything short is a disappointment, which is a testament to how good of a job they've done building their team. This feels like locked one seed. They should be the one seed. Like, they definitely should be the one seed. Orlando Magic, the league's second best defense got better. That's true. I'm in on the Magic, man. I'm in on them. Fanatics, stand up. It's going to be a big year for us. Palo, playmaking leap. Efficiency leap. We're in. Philadelphia 76ers, it's not all on Joel Embiid. That is true. This is quite the picture here. Uh, it's quite the image, to say the least. That is true. Sixers, you know. I'm hopeful they're good. I want the East to be very competitive. 
I want a second round Sixers Celtic series. I think that'd be a blast. Phoenix Suns, goodbye turnovers. Tyus Jones, Monte Morris, two of the best assist turnover ratio guys in the league. Let's see it. Goodbye turnovers. Hello, Kevin Durant at the five. He's 36 years old, folks. Portland Trailblazers, a defensive identity appears afoot. Yeah. Klingon, they brought in Denny Avdia. That's right. They do have Matisse Thybul. There's some good defensive pieces there. There were, there were stretches last year where they were actually like a pretty solid defense. I, and th they probably will be last in the West. But I feel like they're better than most last place teams usually. The West is just so tough. And just by nature of being at the bottom of it, you're going to get beat up quite a bit. I, I think Utah could actually be worse than Portland. What are the odds that Klingon ends up having a D-Live year? I would say it's more likely Khalil Ware has a D-Live year. You, you have to think about teams that are like trying to be good. Danny first option hoops? No, he's not going to be the first option. Jeremy Grant will still be there. Aiton will still be there. Uh, Anthony Simons will still be there. Scoot, Shane Sharp. How much did Aiton's stock drop in the last two years? Quite a bit. There's a, I mean, Aiton for Brandon Ingram. Like, what's, what's actually stopping that from happening? Do, would the Trailblazers even want to do that? And then the Blazers could trade Jeremy Grant somewhere else. Sacramento Kings, the offense is so back. Still not, still not sold on this fit at all. Anyone against the Sacramento Kings acquisition of DeMar DeRozan? Is either put off by the team surrendering a 2031 pick swap? No, I don't really care about that. Aggrieved by supposedly offensive first team leaning further into that model? No, or both? No, that's not what I care about. No, I care about floor spacing, man. Dude, will the Kings make the playoffs? Maybe not. Should be fun to watch, though. San Antonio Spurs, 48 minutes of capable point guard play plus year two Wimby equals fire. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Will they be good? Probably not, but it'll still be fun. DeMar is better than Harrison Barnes, yes. Chris Paul, Trey Jones. That's crazy that the, the Spurs were... A, with the, how terrible the record was, we're a plus team when Trey Jones and Victor Wembanyama were on the floor together. It's kind of hard to find that type of stuff when teams are that bad. Minus 16 when Wimby played without Trey Jones. Jesus Christ. Toronto Raptors, initial returns on the core four were money. Core four. Quickly, RJ, Scotty Barnes, who's the fourth? Pertle? Okay. Cross almost 400 possessions without Pascal Siakam. Lineups featuring that quartet posted a net rating of 13.5. Okay, why? Nice. Nice. It'll be interesting. The Raptors will be interesting, I think. I don't sleep on what RJ's done. You know, I'm a big Scotty guy. Freeman Liberty. <laughs> Uh, uh. Utah Jazz we've sort of seen this movie before remember the start of 2022 2023 when many of us why is this trademarked we're sure the Utah Jazz would be all in on the Victor and Binyama draft what's up with the trademark on many of us um 
I think the Jazz might suck shit this year. The more I think about it, I think they might be really bad. Washington Wizards, potentially frisky offense. Well, they just had to write something for the Wizards, folks. They just had to write something for them.